Oh yeah, not easy, so but it easy. can be so done. easy. Now that you've done it once, it's now you got that. The yeah. Wow. Now you have to take a bite. I'm doing that all the time. I'm just gonna do that in front of. So um, it's so satisfying. Mm. They're good apples too. Worth the reward. Oh yeah. So this is what I learned at Storytellers this year. Here's our video on the Overland Expo East 2022 in Arlington, Virginia the Oak Ridge Estates in the scenic Blue Ridge Mountains in the Shenandoah National Park. Here's a list of our seven shares. Reeb Gear, they're attachments for Sherpas basically. The Winnie Winnebago Echo, me and Annie toured that and we have some feedback for you. Potential Motors, this is an electric like mini explorer van, it's amazing. You're gonna love that tour. Mind Over Land, which is a group that helps military veterans and getting them out, out overlanding. Uh, Defiance Tools, uh, they make cool overland tools for your overland experience. And then we also have a Storyteller Overland running the off-road skills course. And at the end of the video, the bonus material is going to be me tearing an apple in half with my bare hand. For this event, we arrived on Thursday night. We stayed Friday, Saturday, and Sunday we left around 3 p.m. This is a really cool event. It includes camping, exhibitors, education on overlanding, all kinds of stuff. There's classes going on all day, and then also a chance to build within the community of overlanders. Uh, we met a ton of people that uh, we got their names and we plan on staying in touch with for a very long time. Let's talk about food at this event. Um, I think at the food wise, they had a great variety of food trucks. Um, I love that there are so many food trucks there to support the overland community. And I know we did our best to support the food trucks as well. Yeah, I, I enjoyed a lot of the food. Uh, there was a corn dog that was really good. I know that. Uh, also, I think it's great to bring stuff to cook out of, at the campsite. I uh, you agree. go to the campsite halfway through the day, cook up some food, and then uh, get on to the next thing. Now let me talk a little bit about beer. Uh, they had a lot of choices of local breweries. I thought that was nice that they brought in a local flavor. Uh, one of our, um, a company from our area called Blue Toad Cidery actually has a cidery house there. We were not aware of that and uh, we passed one of their signs. We thought someone uh, stole their, their uh, logo. Exactly. So I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the beer and cider? I thought I think it obviously it's a, a great way to um, form a community intentionally or unintentionally at these events because there is a beer tent and you grab a drink and you make new friends and you find old friends and that's honestly like one of my favorite parts about showing up at these places is just grabbing something to drink and finding people to talk to. Some common ground. Um, after, I'm going to tell you, near the beer tent was actually my sneaky um, uh, porta potty, which seemed like no one was using the entire event except for me, which was my favorite. When you talk about bathrooms at uh, the Overland Expo, they had a lot of porta potties, which I thought they did a great job of keeping clean, but we all know sometimes it's a real bonus when you find the one and you happen to be the only person using it. Yeah, so they did a great job of bringing in the company to clean those porta potties up a couple times a day. Um, so I think they did made their best effort as you can at a big event like that. And uh, as Annie said, you want to find one that maybe not as many people are using. That's that's your best. Um, and then on top of that, just make sure you have some additional toilet paper, especially as we get as you get later in the night, that toilet paper disappears, and uh, then you you need it. Smart. Obviously. That reminds me, they have the uh, hand washing stations right outside of the porta potty, which was a bonus because I didn't plan on you. I didn't know about them, so I was carrying around hand sanitizer. But you get in there and you can wash your hands, and uh, they have soap and everything. Love it. So as for dogs, uh, they had tons of dogs, and it was a very dog friendly event. Uh, everybody you know, uh, made sure that their dogs were uh, kept after, and uh, I think the dogs loved the event oh as gosh. much as the people. Definitely, so. I mean, we brought Glenn, who's our dog, and he was a little champion, uh, walking to and from, and um, I don't know if he made many friends, but he made, like, human friends. Probably not as many dog friends, because he's a little Napoleon sometimes. He was definitely a hit. 
um, camping. I think that was part where I had the most fun is when we were back at our uh, back at the storyteller and just uh, enjoying where we were and what you know the purpose of overland camping is what we were there to do. And I thought the community in the camping area was phenomenal. Would yeah, you- they gave you enough space between the vehicles, which I thought was really nice. You still felt like a community, obviously, but. Um, It was spread out enough, and it it was all on grass, which was really nice. The only trade-off to that was uh, there was a lot of dew because the temperature changes um, at night were pretty significant. And uh, it was a little, it was long grass, so you got pretty wet walking around the campsite. However, um, it wasn't muddy, um, it was easy to access, and it was was great camping overall. Hey, Van Fans, we're here at Overland Expo East. 2022. We're going to go into the event, show you kind of what's going on, but I want to show you what's going on here at the parking lot first. The one thing that we love about this event is every morning you wake up and it smells like bacon. Um, Everybody starts cooking bacon right early in the morning, and so the whole event smells like bacon for about probably, well, probably a few hours to be honest. So if you're a vegan, you might not want to come here. So I'm here over here at Reb, Reeb, 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 because it's beer backwards. Beer backwards. Yep. Reeb. So we know our uh, we know our crew here, Reeb Gear, and they are making some really cool stuff for your storyteller. Let me share something. If you own an owl rack or you got your beast with a owl carrier, Sherpa carrier, you got you got to come and visit these guys. They're amazing. Check out their website. They have really, really high quality. And as you guys know, I'm really strict on that um, gear. So can you share a little bit about what you guys are doing? Absolutely. So we have our QRP system. It's like a quick release pin. Okay. Um, step out here, we'll grab a panel. So we have our quick release pins. We have a standard and a locking. And what these are is they're a little push pin. You push the button in, it releases it which uh, causes two ball detents to retract. And then you have a variety of accessories you can mount using those. So in this instance, it's a bottle opener. That's very important. Um, We have some large loops, large hooks. We have flagpole holders. Um, So we're gonna take a look at those in a second here. But you know, what if someone's gonna steal my gear because of this little push pin? You know, you haven't figured out a solution for that? We do actually, we have a locking pin. Oh, so instead of a, yeah, instead of a button there, see if we can track one down. So we do have a locking pin. So if you do have gear, you do not want to get stolen. Stolen. You can go that direction. Yep. Can you show me this flagpole? Because that is something I think is really, really cool. Absolutely. So this is our flagpole bracket. It works with flagpoles that are an inch in diameter. The whole uh, whole opening is actually an inch and a quarter. Uh, both the rubber grip on the bottom, you need extra clearance. So it utilizes what we call a gravity pin. So that's drilled through the flagpole itself. It slides out, and then you can lift the flagpole straight out. And then that bracket's held in place with two pins. So in this instance, we have one locking pin and one standard pin, so nobody can walk off with your bracket. So when you get to camp, you put in your flagpole, slide your gravity pin through, and you're good to go. And then when you're ready to hit the road, you pop it off, leave the bracket on there, and you're all set. You shared with me this uh, thing, which I think is really awesome as well, this step here. Get that real quick. We have an adjustable step. Uh, we do quite a bit of mountain biking and we have a hard time. We use a vertical bike rack, one of bike rack on the back of our Sherpa panel and it's sometimes tough to reach the top bracket to pull it down. So we made this adjustable step. You pull the pin and then the whole thing can slide up or down. Uh, position it however you need to. It gives you a little step to get up there. But if you're worried about ground clearance, once you're ready to go, again, you just pull the pin and they slide it on up out of the way and it locks into place you're ready to go. So as you can see, they got some really high quality, amazing stuff here. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more coming out from these guys because just they love vans. Um, They are van people because I can see their vans behind me and which are also amazing. Um, I hope you guys will check them out. What's the best way to find you guys? So our website, reedgear.com or you can check us out on Instagram, just at reedgear. All right. Thank you so much. Yep. 
So me and Annie are in this Echo, which uh, we're just looking at some cool ideas. One thing we really like is these type of windows, these awning windows. Um, they do have, what is really cool is there's a screen, um, but from the bottom is also the shade. So you have kind of both built in there. I love that idea. Um, but one thing we're gonna see if we can mod into our van would be this, which is really cool. They got LED lights underneath the cabinet. Um, and if the overhangs enough, we're totally modding this like next weekend. Um, so really sweet idea there. Um, inside the Echo, what's our uh, take? This giant refrigerator is amazing. So we have a huge refrigerator here. I mean, it's like a household one. It's amazing. And microwave, nice because I know. I don't know if Rebels have that now, but I know they didn't they used to. Big area back there. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this back area. It looks like they might fold into a big queen. I mean, this would be like a king size bed back here. It's huge. And these windows are pretty killer as well. Huge windows. I don't know why they don't have these down showing this thing off, but definitely feels more like an RV. Um, but more of like kind of a European style RV, in my opinion. What do you think, Amy? I love it. Just um, little things, just this trash. Things you don't think about that are used every minute. So, this is a good life. location for your trash as well. Thank you. So, bathroom, what? So, it goes from shower to. Uh, Oh, does this have that slider wall? Oh, cool. So there's an actual wall here for this that like converts into a shower. So you go from shower mode here to sink and toilet mode here. Kinda cool. So I'm Sam Poria. I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO of Potential Motors. We're a company based out of Eastern Canada. This is the Adventure One. All right, love it. This is the first time that we've showcased this vehicle anywhere. <laughs> so we did all the design engineering in Eastern Canada, and then this was actually fabricated in Italy. So it's got a fiberglass bath on. It's an Overland UTV, okay. so it's classified as UTV, but extremely off-road capable. So that's why you look at the size of this thing. It's actually 64 inches in width. Okay. So you can fit down all kinds of trails and things like that. Then what's cool too is if you look at the side doors here, these actually open out sideways. Oh, sweet. So this comes up like a gullwing door and then you can get yourself out of the sun, into the shade, check yourself from rain, things like that too. The seats inside of here, they actually pull right out. So you can use this for camping outside if you wanted to, but then they clip in. So you can have four seats in here, or you can even extend this out to have six seats. Then we got a full-size bed, size of the vehicle. This can fold right up. So if you want to, you can use the inside of this for all kinds of other things. These doors are wide enough, you can actually fit a full-size pallet inside of it. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So they, they have the gull wing doors, both doors open that way? Yep, both, both open, just like wings. That's awesome. Yeah. Now how fast do you got to go for this thing to get a little air to get some lift yeah is there, or, well i mean it depends if you have the wings open or not. <laughs> i'm joking obviously i know i know <laughs> all right awesome yeah so you got a stair it looks like a stair built into the side here to get on the roof so this here is actually staircase to be able to get up use it as a ladder and then here we've got basically a, a embedded like kind of truck bed so that could be used if you want to have like a rooftop tent up there or just put some more storage on the top. Okay. There'd be all kinds of things. So what stage are you at like on this whole thing? I mean, are you guys, it looks like you're taking orders for future sales. Is like, what's the timeline or the the best case scenario uh, timeline of when you might be putting one of these out where someone could actually buy one? Yeah, yeah. So we're doing pre-orders for the vehicle now. So it's a thousand dollar deposit, fully refundable. And that basically gets you in line for production, which will happen in 2025. Okay, so pretty quick. Yeah, so we actually, we have another vehicle that we do a lot of testing with that you'll be able to see on our website. So okay. that we're doing a lot more off-road. It doesn't have the exterior on it. So we basically just didn't beat the hell out of it to okay. test it. Cool. And with that, we're testing a lot of the technology that fits inside of this. Okay. So 
this is the surface, but inside of it, we have what we call off road OS. Okay. Basically, that's doing some predictive mapping of terrain and using that for proactive traction control. Oh, cool. So we're actually adapting on the fly to the type of terrain you're driving over. Okay. And then uh, tell me a little bit more about, I mean, this looks like it's an electric vehicle, so I assume it is. You didn't, you didn't mention that, but yeah, it is yeah. electric, fully electric. Yeah, so this okay. is fully electric. It has a 70 kilowatt hour battery pack, so it'll get okay. you around 100 miles of off-road driving. Okay, and then are we driving both the front and the rear wheels? Are they individual motors? Is it one motor? What What do we got going on there? Two power trains, one in the back and then one in the rear. Okay, and uh, I see the brakes look massive on this. I mean, for a vehicle this size, so uh, you guys have done that right. Is that what will probably actually go to production or? Okay. Right. So, I mean, this thing, although it looks cute and small, yeah. it'll actually pick up and go quite oh, bad good. with but, electric. Yeah, it's electric. It's got really high horsepower and torque. So roughly 600 horsepower and 600 foot pound of torque as well. And uh, you know, the way the vehicle is roughly 4,000 pounds. So this is really capable for doing high grade ability. Okay. And it's also just really popular too. Oh yeah, I bet. So, and where's production going to be on these vehicles? Is that in Canada or is it happening somewhere else? You said the bodies are going to be made in Italy or they, this one was, or? Yeah, so the uh, the body for this and the vehicle was built in Italy. Basically, we do all the design, engineering, software development, all that happens in New Brunswick. Okay. Then the actual production will likely happen in North America. So either in Ontario or Michigan. Perfect. I'm going to get actually a little bit. Make sure you're in the video still. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I disrupted your tour as you're kind of making the turn here. And it looks like there's some really cool kit back here as well. Absolutely. Yeah, so. so What's awesome, so one thing I'll, I'll mention too is this vehicle has uh, like batteries down low. We I mean, actually have 40 liters of water built into a chassis too. Oh, cool. So having all that down low gives us some really good flow center. Yeah. It also means that we can do some cool stuff in the So we've got here a propane setup for cooking in the rear of the vehicle. We've got a working sink that can actually be swapped out really easily with a shower head. Okay. So you can use that with the doors basically hanging up and have a shower. Okay, cool. We got fridge over here and then cutting board that can just pop out nice and easy. And this whole thing just slides right back in underneath. Great. And that will be in like the base basic model or is the battle come as part of this package okay yeah. and uh, is there a purpose of this is it just so that the door i mean it, it looks really cool how it's got this like extruded <laughs> piece here that, so, yeah so everything's been done with quite a bit of intentions so this is actually rain okay so awesome okay and then um, for power inside, like to use, I mean, you're, you're just drawing the power off of the regular battery that the vehicle uses to, to move as well. That's so you don't have separate batteries, it's just one for the... There is, there's two voltage levels. So there's high voltage, so there's actually just a power train. Yeah. Then there's the air system, which is for all the lighting and everything. Okay. But that 12 volts is all powered through the high voltage yeah. system. Okay, so they're just pumping it down. Yeah, and with the 70 kilowatt hour pack, if you were to camp out in this thing, and you would just put it over here, you're charging your phone. It's watch as well as all that stuff. Yeah. So power is not for like a week or three. Okay, yeah. awesome. Are right, any other uh, like clearance or anything like that? I mean, it's probably you can hold everything pretty tight because it is electric, I'm guessing, from underneath, so you don't have any so the snag points or anything. No, it's a rock guard underneath, which is basically protecting it from those rocks that can come up and over. Yeah. And protect the battery pack because that's really important. And then uh, this is fairly off road capable. So we've got 13 inches of ground clearance. Okay. And it's a bunch of travel. And overall capabilities similar to that, but more of a Jeep. Okay. And then just one last question about that suspension. Is it a solid axle or are they separate, it's independent? Consistent. So all four independent and each wheel drives um, off the two back wheels drive off of one motor, the front two wheels drive off of one motor. That and are they, they're just, they're all four going to be driving at like, if you're getting stuck, I'm guessing is. So if you get stuck, so the way it works, you have a motor hooked up to a gearbox and there's a differential. Okay. And that differential is electronically controlled. So okay. you can basically be on five fraction of each wheel. But that's something that we want. Um, Needed. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. What about the kit up front, like in the dashboard and stuff like that? Is that. Wow, that could be a no problem for you to check out inside. So the whole goal with the interior was to take a lot of inspiration from 
the loading industry, actually. Okay. Because boats go through some pretty harsh conditions. Do you see this type of epoxy that's used? In- yeah, it's like a, it's more of like a, it, you can't see this obviously in the video, but it's like more of like a rubberized kind of boat, like boat yeah, or material. Yeah, that's yeah. That's super cool. Now, is it dash the same thing or is it more of a saw? Or- yeah, it's more of a, yeah. Dash is very similar. Very. The whole idea with this, I mean, that uh, those two screens aren't the final screens, but all of this will be able to be Okay. Into, so you can clean the whole thing out. Yeah, and you can see it's very minimalistic, and uh, for an overlanding vehicle, that's what you want. You don't want all this gadgetry and stuff that's going to break down and you're not going to be able to fix. Um, there's not much to it, which is a benefit of electric vehicles, obviously. Exactly. So, it's just to keep it simple and focus on the experience. Well, very cool. So how can people find you? Um, what's the best website or place to go and um, learn about more about your product and put a, a hold on a vehicle? Absolutely. So you can follow us at, uh, at Potential Motors on Instagram, but then also at our website, www potentialmotors.com. Perfect. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for giving me this tour. I'm I'm really interested. So thank you. Oh, no problem. All right. And so what's your guys' mission? So what, what we do is uh, essentially, uh, once you separate from the military, you kind of lose that camaraderie and that family. Yeah. And a lot of people struggle with that. So what we do is we seek to take veterans out and get them outdoors because you know, the therapy of being outdoors. We're reconnecting people with, uh, uh, with folks who speak the same language. Okay. And where are you guys located? Like, where we're, at, we're uh, I'm based out of North Carolina. Okay. And is that where all of that is happening? Or is uh, it? No, we uh, pretty much we focus on the southeast and the okay. west coast okay. because there's a yeah. lot of trips and trails right. for the west coast guys, yeah. and, but there's not, nothing here on the east coast. Okay. And then how do how do people find you and how do we support you? Um, you can find us at mindoverland.com or at uh, mindoverland.org. Okay. Also on Facebook and Instagram as mindoverland. Okay. Um, um, on our website is uh, all of our trips. You can make donations. Okay. Um, some of our t-shirts are going to be up there probably in the next week or so. We just got our website up in the last two weeks. Okay. So we'll see, this, this is our coming out party. If you want. And can other Overlanders partake in the Overland experiences and stuff, or is it for other veterans? Or? Okay. So if uh, so for the way we do it, uh, we cover all of the fuel. All okay. of the fuel. If someone doesn't have a vehicle. We have an open seat. We okay. want to make sure there's no barriers for veterans getting back outside. Awesome. I love it, man. This is an awesome vision. So we're at Defiance Tools, which is a storyteller supporter. We, we, uh, we have our Stow Nation discount, if you didn't know. Um, and we have their most awesome tool, which I really want a demo of. Can you show me that? Absolutely. So barbecue multitude. Take it out of the case. Starts like this. Breaks apart into the grill fork and a spatula. You can join them together and you got tongs. Amazing. And you've got a knife, a nice chef's knife, a bottle opener, and pork strip. Love it. And then it's all stainless steel and breaks down so it's easy and compact. Snap together. Easy to wash up with soap and water. It's actually dishwasher safe too. And this fits into your store storage uh, drawers very easily, um, speaking from experience. And uh, now I bought a new toy last night from you guys, um, your coffee grinder. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Can we grab one of those? Oh. Yeah, so it's a uh, ceramic bird grinder, They're all stainless. We've got the beans that go on the top. Handle comes off for storage, and then you've got grind adjustment here. So 30 different settings from super fine, of course. And as you grind your coffee, it collects the cup down below. Coffee, amazing. Um, used it this morning. I've been looking for quite a while for something pretty high quality, and this is once again uh, designed or. Uh, supplied by an engineer so you know that they know what they're doing so uh i love it thank you so much uh, i would highly recommend purchasing one of those um also cracked a joke about how i could maybe hook my power drill up yeah. to the end there and uh, be super lazy but there's just something about grinding it yourself that feel of the coffee grounds uh, grinding in the morning that make you feel like you're back with mother nature so highly recommend that too so 
Um, thank you so much. How can how can people find you? You can find us online, defiancetools.com. Okay. And this donation is a discount on the website there. So fantastic. Get out and, and 20% off. So well, shot. thank you so much. And we appreciate you guys. So this is what they call the Overland Experience, um, and it's the off-road course. And as you can see, there's a storyteller running the course here. And it was really interesting to be able to see a vehicle that you own or a van and the capabilities of that van to run a course right next to Jeeps and uh, capable Land Cruisers. Uh, especially in this video, as you watch this van come down this really steep hill, the departure angle is really impressive. And then just the um, short wheelbase getting over that hill and not getting kind of uh, center lined is also really impressive. Uh, one other thing, this is the crossover. I love this part that comes up here as you watch a Jeep a passenger just kind of watch and be, and be in awe about the fact that a van of this size is running this course, um, commuting right against them. So you can see the crossover here with the tire spinning. Um, but this was a really cool part of the experience, Annie. What do you think of this this section of the? I loved course? it. I, I have a lot of respect for the um, the van owners who are um, who partake in this course, and especially for the professionals out there guiding them who know this course and who uh, you know teach you what uh, where to, how to put your uh, van in gear and what have you, and just guiding you along. I mean, it's 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 pretty outstanding the teamwork that happens between the. Uh, person driving and the uh, person on the ground who knows what's going on all the time. And there's a roped off section where you can actually watch this whole event go down um, and drink beers. There's tables out there, eat your lunch. And uh, if anything, I don't feel like we spent enough time there. I think we found it on, uh, what was it, was it Saturday evening or Sunday early morning? I think it was Saturday evening because we looked at a schedule and we saw there was a storyteller that was going to attempt the course. But uh, that's definitely like a, a bonus um, place I didn't even know about. So, you know, head there first. Yeah, one other thing um, that I'd like to share is that this is considered part of what they call the Vehicle Overland Experience Pass. And it's four hundred and five dollars this year in 2023. Um, we waited too long to sign up, and that's the reason we weren't able to run the course. Um, it this is something that sells out really quick. So if you are considering doing this, you should consider doing it sooner than later. If your hands slide, you got to readjust. Then when you find somewhere that they don't slide, you just roll really hard, and it'll crack open. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Oh yeah, it's not easy, so but it easy. can be so easy. Now that you've done it once, now you got to do it. Yeah. Wow. Now you have to take a bite. I'm doing that all the time. I'm just going to do that in front of um, someone else. That's so satisfying. Mm. A good apple too. Worth the reward. Oh yeah. So this is what I learned at Storytelling this year. And that's the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll consider giving us a thumbs up as well as subscribing to our channel and turning the notifications on. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye.